Somebody's not really pulling their weight today. What's up, Moose? Guarding the 57? Getting a good nap in? All right, carry on. And well, bam! We are back in the Montana garage for a long awaited update video. That's a little bit of a lie because this is actually not an update video other than you can see the car back there behind me and it looks a little bit more like a car. And I mean, just look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it. Just look at it. Also, there's a new oil pan sitting on the floor right there. Uh, so that's a little bit of a clue as to what I'm doing out here right now and what's coming up on future videos, unfortunately. Uh, but in this video, like I said, it's not really an update video. We're gonna go back in time. That's right, we're gonna turn the hands of time back. We're gonna revisit some of the stuff that I did as I was preparing for Rocky Mountain Race Week that I didn't have time, okay, I didn't make time to uh, edit videos and show you guys. So I have a lot of footage. Let's see, this one is installing rear brakes or uh, rear brake lines, I think. And then, I mean, I got roll bar stuff. If I got interior stuff, if I got uh, wiring stuff, if I got more rear end stuff, I got, uh, I got uh, fixing oil leaks. <laughs> this isn't going well. Shocker, I know. I got uh, removing and replacing the transmission, which was fun when I thought I was ready to drive the car and I had to tear all that apart. Uh, watch that video, you'll find out why. And uh, let's see, I don't, I get, there's just, there's lots of stuff that I skipped along the way because I just didn't make time to do it. I was trying to scramble and get done. It didn't work anyways, as you know, I did not go to Rocky Mountain Race Week. And uh, well, I was almost gonna tell you something else, but this is an update video. You gotta come back for the next video. Hopefully the next video will be an update video. So this video and future videos sprinkled in will be going back in time. And I'll probably have a little introductory or something that tells you that we're back in time or I don't know. I'll figure it out as I go. Hopefully you guys will watch it. If you guys don't watch it, then that's, that's uh, I guess YouTube will tell me that and then I'll quit putting the old videos out. But uh, for you guys that are here and they are watching it, thanks. I appreciate everybody's support as always. And I've been a little absent lately, but uh, we're gonna try to get back on the old YouTube and start making some more highly entertaining videos or well, some more videos. You guys will let me know if they're entertaining. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. See you on the next one for a live, well, not live. We should do a live again. Should we do a live again? Let me know if we want to do a live again. Uh, see you on the next one for a current video as to what is actually going on and what is coming up. Uh, there you have it. Enjoy. Uh, Moose, where you at? I don't my seat again. Every time he comes out here, he goes right to the seat. I keep telling him no and taking him down, but uh, I guess I gotta either cover that up or move it, because otherwise it has become the cat bed. Moose, what do you got to say for yourself? Are you supposed to be up there? Yeah, you don't look too concerned. Anyhow, today's task, I think, is going to be rear brake lines. So I got the front ones done a while ago, but I still have, here's where the rear goes out. I was kind of waiting on the rear end. I have the rear end, so I guess there's nothing left to wait on on that. So we got to get to it. I kind of have my parts laid out over here. Got some line. The only thing I couldn't find is I should have some more of these fittings somewhere. I couldn't find them, so I have these uh, couple of scrap lines that I messed up on. So I got some I can take off of there. This little kit will go from the uh, housing to each caliper. This line will go from the frame to the housing. And then we got some miscellaneous little ways to clamp the line to the frame and mount this guy to the frame and stuff. So, although I like looking at how this thing sits, let's get her jacked up in the air. So we got some room to get under there and get some work done. So I'm under the car here and you guys know the rule, right? I mean, the rule is nothing can be easy. At least that's how it works out for me. So the first thing I'm trying to do is try to figure out this is my flexible line that's gonna go from the frame. It's gonna end up here on the driver's side. It's gonna end up here somewhere. I'll, you know, I'll run the line from the master cylinder down the frame rail. I'm trying to figure out where I'm gonna end it here. And then this is the line that I bought that's gonna go from the frame, you know, to the axle tube here. And then it'll, you can see it'll, that's like a T, so it'll split and go both ways. And then there's gonna be another flexible hose that goes from this to the brake caliper that I don't have on here. So I'm trying to figure that all out 
And so I don't have this caliper on yet. So I went over to this side to just get an idea where the hose is gonna come off the brake caliper. And this is where the nothing is easy start. The brake line wants to come out at this angle so that you know I can get it up here to the axle without it hitting anything. There's no little window notched out right here. There's a little window notched out in the very front of the caliper. And if I do that, this brake line, the way this line is, it just nails right into the axle tube. Um, it hits it without going under it. I can't bend it to go over it. So I'll show you over here on the other caliper what I'm talking about. Here's the other caliper. I haven't put it in the car yet. And what I was saying is this caliper has the window coming out. This is towards the front of the car, but that doesn't work. It wants to come out right here. So what I did is I just took the old die grinder and notched out a little spot there so that it'll work. So no big deal. The first thing I looked into was trying to get, see if I could find these hose, brake hoses with a 90 degree banjo on it because then it could have came out and went down like this but i can find 90 degree banjo ends that then convert to like an fittings but just no hose ends at least that i could find with a 90 degree banjo on this end and the right 3 16 or whatever this is on this end so i think i can make this work uh, i've just never thrown this caliper on there so i'll take the tires and wheels off throw this caliper on pull that caliper off so i can bring it over here and then notch it i can't i don't quite have enough room to get the die grinder up in there uh, with it on the car so it's not that hard to get off so we'll we'll get both of those done and then that way we can figure out exactly where the little tabs got to be welded on the axle and then we have to make a hard line that connects this end of the passenger side we'll make a hard line that'll go to that flexible hose the braided hose with a t on it and then we got to have just a little teeny short section from the uh, t to the driver's side huh. so let me take some stuff apart and then we'll come back and see if we can get anything accomplished Back to the, there's always got to be something department. I added another half inch lowering block in this the other day. And uh, I can't get my damn brake caliper pin out of here because it hits the freaking leaf spring. Ah. Perfect. Well, I was able to use a little persuasion from a hammer and a punch to get it out of there, angled it up over the leaf spring just barely i'm not sure it did me a ton of good though because i don't think i'm gonna get it back in there that way so anyways let me fix what i gotta fix on the caliper to get the brake line on there and then i'll figure out what i gotta fix to get the caliper back on there now from the there's always something category to i think i'm an idiot category uh, i just now realized after grinding these out that this other end that i thought was a certain you know, 3 sixteenths, whatever, to go in my brake lines. Oops, sorry, I got one-handed here. It's actually just a fitting on the end of a straight-ended hose. So I think I actually did see some 90-degree ones like that. So I probably could have done that too. But anyways, we got her fixed this way. One way or another. Right way, wrong way. I don't know. I think it's going to work though. Well, I'm out of time for the night. Story of my life. Um, took me all, I mean, not all night, I'm only here for a little while, but took all the time I had tonight just to kind of get back to where I was when I started. I had to fight with these stupid brake calipers. I was able to get them both on and off without removing anything. I just had to kind of pound in this bottom pin. Probably not ideal because there are threads in there that I'm pounding through, but they still threaded in. So hopefully that's all good. And then the other thing I accomplished, what you guys can see under here at light, but. I got my flexible line. Uh, there was a little hole in this body mount already. I just had to drill it out larger. And then I put the little clip in there. So that's where my flexible mount is. They used to be on the other side originally on the Tri-5. So I was gonna make a little bracket, but this little bracket was already here and it's close enough. So that's gonna go there. And then I'll weld a little stud on top of the housing here for that to mount to. And then this line, I have it zip tied in place, but then that will mount with one of these guys right here close to, I don't want to have it like right next to the U-bolt, but it's going to have to be pretty close to the U-bolt because I need room to make a little hard line between here and here. And I can only sheet this so far inboard because then the line hits the shock. Plus I have this vent here. So this is going to have to be about right there, which doesn't leave me much room. I have to put this either right next to the U-bolts or maybe even in between the U-bolts to be able to have room to make a little hard line to connect the two. So I'll figure all that out. And then of course we have to make a hard line that goes up and over the top and then we'll have another one of these guys 
mounted on top of the housing over there for this flexible line to mount into. What do you think, Moose? Good idea? You don't care. Um, so anyways, we've got everything all planned out and at least we have an idea what we're doing back here. One thing I need to get is a little weld on stud. For this guy, I could make something out of a bolt probably, but I've seen some little weld on studs in the, the uh, bolt bins at the hardware store. So I'll grab one of those and I may get some smaller ones if they got some smallish ones. Or I got to figure out some way to clamp the hard line down in a few spots as it goes across. And then of course we still have to run the hard line all the way up to the master cylinder or the, I guess, proportioning valve as it is. But uh, I may get back out tonight, but I may not. So whenever I get back out here, that's what I'll be working on. Uh, hopefully you'll still be here to join me. See you then. All right, next day I'm back out in the Montana garage and uh, look at that, we got sunshine. It's actually pretty nice out. 60 degrees in the shop. I actually had the heat running a little bit this morning because it was chilly, uh, but it's actually gonna be like 50 degrees outside today. Springtime has finally arrived in Montana Grudge. T-shirt weather, first time I'm able to wear a t-shirt in the shop forever. Uh, I got this one from the boys over at Rapid Hot Rods on Instagram. Uh, give them a follow, check it out. Yesterday I went and bought a little bit of hardware so I can finish my running the brake lines across rear end housing. And just as I was getting ready to get started, I thought, well, I better Take a look at look at the uh, countdown clock here. And uh, 77 days left for Rocky Mountain Race Week. If I were a betting man, which I'm not, but if I were a betting man, I'd probably bet I'm watching Rocky Mountain Race Week on YouTube once again. But uh, I'm not giving up yet. I'm gonna try to get this damn thing together because I really want to go. So let's get to work. I think the first thing we'll do is I got this little weld on. Whoa, got away from me. Got this little weld on stud and that's gonna go on top of the housing for the flexible line to mount to. So I think I'll figure out where I want that, give it a couple little tacks, and that way we can figure out where this guy's gonna call home, and then we'll tack on this uh, other little bracket for this line, and then we can start making our hard lines. Uh, I wanna try to get the hard lines across the rear end all built, and then we gotta do the hard line up to the uh, proportioning valve too. So that's the minimum goal that we must get done today. Probably not gonna happen, but that's what we're, that's what we're shooting for. Bring it back under here for a quick update. We got this tab welded on and our stud welded on for this guy. I'll use different hardware on here once I, you know, put it together for final. And then all this stuff I'll final weld once I take the rear end back out. So everything's just tacked now. But now I'm gonna make a little tiny line that goes from here to here. And then we'll work on the other side. As usual, that was at least twice as hard as it needed to be, but we got the axle plumbed now finally. Flexible line to uh Weld on tab to a stud where the splitter is over the top, over to another weld on tab and the flexible line. So now all I have left on the brakes is uh, plumbing a line from the flexible line where it stops on the frame up to the proportioning valve. Yeah, that's what it's called, proportioning valve. Uh, I do need to go get a few more brake fittings because for some reason I can't find, I should have like another bag of five, but uh, you know, organization isn't my strong suit, so they're somewhere in here, but it's probably gonna be faster for me to just go get a couple more than tear apart the whole shop looking for them. So one way or another, I'll get some more fittings and we'll get that line ran. All right, once again, back for a little update and we're over here at the whiteboard. So that means we're crossing stuff off the list. Uh, not a lot, but we are getting a little bit of stuff done. So let's take a peek. Uh, can you guys see that? I don't know. Lowering blocks, those are done. Uh, patch the trunk floor. That's mostly done. You know, I still got to paint it. That that doesn't count. It's done ish um, Fuel system rebuild car dry plum rear brakes plum rear brakes That is also done. So let's uh, go take a peek at what we did over there as soon as I find the lid to my marker Meet you over the car So I ran to town got a few more fittings and I was able to plumb this rear line in coming out of the back at the proportioning valve here. Goes down, uh, we got our strap down right there. And then there is a, uh, I don't know the technical term, a splitter. Uh, anyways, uh, I have it. I, I would have liked to have made that in one piece, but I made it in two. And so now we have one extra connection joint. I don't know. I knew what I was gonna say three seconds ago and I forgot story of my life. So there's one more place for it to possibly leak, but it shouldn't leak. I mean, they're flared and it's, you know, the, the union, it's a union. But the reason I did that is because the brake flaring tool that I have only flares tools in the vise. You can't do it on the car. And I don't have one of the other ones. So 
that line goes, you know, down and then along the frame. So to do it all in one piece, I would have to figure out that bend and then try to drag it back out of there. So I just put that union in. I did all this bendy stuff, put the union in, and then the last piece is all just mostly straight coming in along the frame. So that's the way I did it that way. Let's crawl underneath and take a peek at that. I'm not sure what the best way to see all this is. Here's the axle stuff. We already kind of showed you that from a distance. Um, but then we have uh, the line running along the frame rail. I snuck up above kind of all the brackets and mounts and whatnot. And then as you can see, I have some little rubber grommets or straps or I don't know what those are called either. Hey Moose, what's up buddy? Uh, and then it comes, you know, to this junction here where it switches to flexible. So line goes all along the frame and then near the front there, it has that union just so I could have made it. So I made it in two pieces. So brake lines are all done. And uh, I think they should all be good. I don't even think we have any issues with anything. So, uh, the, well, the only thing I still have to do is once I take the rear end out to put the, to weld the spring perches, whatever they're called, I will weld these tabs on fully. But uh, yeah, other than that, brakes be done. Well, and of course, once I put them back together, they need bled, but, and then, then we'll find all the leaks. Um, I'm not gonna do any of that until we, take the axle back out, paint it, and put it back in. But uh, then we'll find all the leaks and figure out what else we gotta do. But until then, the brakes are done. So along with the brakes finally being plumbed and mostly done, this video is also done. Um, oh, Moose, you're trying to trip me, buddy. Uh, so like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, and come back next time. And, uh, and as usual, I don't really know what I'm doing next. Um, I might be putting the front sheet metal on or doing some wiring or some other mystery activity. So come back and find out when I find out.